What's up, everybody? Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw! And I've been asked a ton recently about boost emblems, the best way to get boost emblems, the best way to get the energy, the best way to build them. I've noticed we have a lot of new players who are asking a lot about this. I have a full boost emblem guide on my channel that has pretty close to up-to-date boost emblem guides for every Pokemon. I'm going to be updating that soon, but this is just a good overview of everything boost emblem inside of Pokemon Unite. So what are boost emblems? Emblems, they are these little guys in a bunch of different colors that you can organize to create a very pretty boost emblem setup to help your Pokemon inside of battle. How much do they help them? A little bit. It is not game changing. If you do not have the highest level of boost emblems, you are not at a huge disadvantage, but it is a cool way to customize your character. And I will show you a little bit of how to do that, even if you don't have a ton of boost emblems coming up here in just a minute. First, let's start with how you get boost emblems. You play matches of Pokemon Unite and your energy tanks give you boost emblems. When you have your, the main energy tank right here, you are generating this boost emblem energy, or I guess this energy tank energy, what do they call it? The energy rewards energy, I guess is what it would be called. You generate this energy, once you get 100, that is essentially one tick of it that you can use for either boost emblems or fashion items. And you sort of roll the dice a little bit and you see what you get. There are two kinds of boost tanks that you can have on when you are playing matches that give you extra energy. The energy boost tank and then the energy boost tank 4x speed. If you have the 4x speed on, you definitely want to have this on. You just generate energy way faster than you would have otherwise. Basically, the way this works is if you earn 100 boost energy at the end of a match, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but let's say you earn 100, you get an additional 400 every match when you have the purple tank on. You get an additional 100 every time you would have this tank on right here. This equals the exact amount you earn. The other tank is 4x. So every time you have the energy boost tank 4x definitely make sure you put it on and then once it's gone you need to switch back to the energy boost tank once you have used up your main tank for the week you can no longer earn boost energy however there are multiple ways to earn new extra energy tanks a lot of the time it is through events also every single day right here under the exchange one time section you get a free energy pull do it every single day log in daily get a free one. Hey, you might get something cool. If you are crazy obsessed with this, you can head on into the AO Symporium right here and then head on down to items and you can purchase additional energy tanks and boost tanks. I do not think you need to do this. You will get these by playing the game. And again, the boost emblems don't make such a game changing difference that you cannot play without them. So I would not recommend spending a ton of real life money on this. You really don't need to. Let's talk about a few ways you can actually get some boost emblems. If you happen to be someone who buys the battle passes throughout them, there's a gold emblem box, a couple silver emblem boxes as you are earning some of your rewards right here. So that just gives you a free emblem as you are leveling up this battle pass here. If you don't buy the battle pass, then that is not a way to earn this. Pokemon Unite constantly has new events going on. Like right now, we are in the EV Festival as I record this. As you can see on this first page right here, you would be able to get an energy boost tank if you knock out 20 opposing Pokemon during the event. On the second stage right here, you get a full extra energy tank if you make a total of 30 assists. So there are lots of ways to earn extra energy tanks throughout the game. I think there's another one on here with a login mission. I can't remember exactly where it is, but you get my point. There are extra ways to earn earn these tanks just through a lot of the events they throw into the game. Right here, logging in for seven days, you get an extra energy tank. Another way to earn boost emblems is through your Unite Squad events. So you can log into this here, Unite Squad, head on down to the Unite Squad event, and your squad can together rank up, earn all of these points, and unlock a silver emblem box, which will give you a silver emblem, and then every once in a blue moon, a gold emblem will pop out of it. You can get that once a week as well. As you level up your total trainer level, you get rewards, but every season you actually unlock rewards that are mainly focused right now, right around boost emblems. So this last season right here, you get a gold Tyranitar, you get Porygon Z, you get all of these boost emblems, Blissey right there, so over, Elekid, Skarmory. So just by playing, you unlock these as well. They're up at the top there. You hit the X button and you can pull this up. And here is a way to earn this faster. Head on over to your consumable items and take a look at these guys. Battle point boost cards. There really is no use for these except it just 
increases the amount of battle points you earn. That little section we looked at is affected by battle points. So use these, get double the battle points when you do your battles, and you will get even quicker progress through that section. Whew. Didn't think I was going to make it through that sentence, but we got there. I'm sure I'm missing something, but there you have it. All the ways to earn boost emblems as fast as you possibly can. Now let me show you how to quickly make a few boost emblem setups for your Pokemon. First, let's talk about colors very quickly. Uh, yellow, red, somewhat blue and purple, as well as gray, navy, and I think one other pink kind of are all kind of eh, not super amazing colors. Look, anything that you do with your boost emblems that gives you an advantage would be good, but you can kind of stay away from those. The big ones are brown for your attackers, black for some of your attackers and mainly your special attackers, white, one of the best emblem setups, blue and purple are okay, and then green is pretty good. The yellows, the reds, they're just not super reliable. They don't raise attack speed or move speed exactly how you would want. I actually love some of these other emblem colors, but I think you need to spend a little more time in the game before you start using them. So let's talk a couple quick emblem setups right here. For your special attackers, that's any Pokemon that's listed as special attack, they are going to benefit from special attack emblems. You can use a basic setup that uses green and black emblems. These combo really well together. I'm just gonna make something super quick right now and I'll tell you my thought process while I make it. I'm gonna sort here for all black emblems and I'm gonna filter them out and we're gonna go through. First of all, we have some black and green emblem setups together. So I'm just gonna start plugging those in right here because that will help get our colors as quickly as possible. You might not have all of these options. In fact, you won't have them all right away, but as best you can, you want to get seven black, six green. Here's kind of an interesting one that we can talk about. Beedrill. Beedrill gives you negative HP and increases special defense. Usually HP is better than almost every other stat in the game because no matter what type of attack is hitting it, HP will help you right there. So while Beedrill is a good one for our green black setup, we'd actually rather take a bronze Beedrill than a gold Beedrill right here. And you can go ahead and throw that on right there. Same thing possibly with Victor Bell right here. It increases attack and lowers defense. We're putting this on our special attackers. So attack is actually not a useful stat for us really at all. So we could take a bronze version of this Pokemon as well. Now again, you may not have these, so just do your best as you start to move through. Let's say I had Tyranitar on here for another Black Emblem. I'll throw another one on here. We can see our Golbat right here. It will lower some special defense, give us some movement speed. That's okay. We're just continuing to make seven Black right here. And then we can try to grab one more. Let's see what we got. Uh, Tentacruel lowers our critical hit rate and gives us a little special defense. Fair enough. And now we have room for a few green emblems. We'll go ahead and filter those right here. And we'll grab a few as if I don't have pretty much every emblem in the game, which I do now. Let's see. Ah, Executor lowers move speed, gives us a little special attack. Sounds good to me. We need one more green emblem. Let's see what we get here. Um... We're gonna take, uh, sure, green, white, lowers attack, increases move speed, sounds good to me. Now we have seven black, six white. As you can see, we also have a couple other pairings possible right here. We have purple, we have white, we have blue. Let's just say that we were gonna go in here and add one more emblem to it. A blue, white sounds good, so I'll switch over to my blues. If I happen to have that, scroll down and find something that's blue, white. Hey, Articuno, welcome to the squad, buddy. And in fact, that's a really good one for us because it lowers attack and increases special attack. So is this the perfect emblem setup? No, it's not perfect. And your emblem setup might look a lot worse than this when you first start, but you're heading in this direction. You're completing the colors that are important to you, black, green for a special attack or Pokemon like Espeon or something like that. And at the same time, you're trying to find other combinations that make some sense. When you're looking at your stats over here, you're trying to make sure that you're dumping or you are lowering stats you don't use and increasing stats you do use. Every Pokemon uses HP. Move speed's pretty good on lots of Pokemon. This is a special attack focus build, so our special attack is going up, 4.8. Critical hit rate and attack is going down because none of the Pokemon that we're going to be using this on really care about attack or critical hit. This is just a basic look at a special attacker. Now let's do something for a tankier Pokemon. 
when we're talking about tankier Pokemon, we definitely want to be focusing on white emblems. These are your defenders, your supporters. I mean, honestly, lots of Pokemon benefit a ton from having extra HP. So what I'm going to look for here is I'm going to look for things that give me more HP and things that hopefully don't lower my stats too bad as we're going forward here. Let's see, yeah, you seem to be doing pretty good. And I'm just gonna be using some bronze emblems right here so you can see what it's like when you first start putting emblems on here. And we'll say we're gonna make a build for a tanky physical Pokemon like Trevenant or something like that. Tauros right here is a pretty good one as it gives us plus 1.2 attack and we lose 1.8 special attack. That works perfectly for something like Trevenant. We would switch that out if we were making this for Blastoise or something because that's a special attacker. Let's see, uh, this gives us attack and loses special attack, fair enough. And let's look for one more white emblem, something that gives us HP. Ooh, in fact, you can also filter by effect right here. So you can look for an effect. I wanna look for an HP. I'll head down to our bronze emblems right here and I'll go ahead and throw on uh, this Blissey. Sounds good to me. Ooh, actually, let's throw on Smeargle right here because it gives me HP and lowers special attack. There you go. Now we have six white. And as you can see, we only lose a little defense and special defense. And at the same time, we gain some HP and some attack. Now there are a couple directions we can go. We can go into brown emblems because this is gonna be for an attack build, or we can go into blue purple emblems for extra defenses. Oftentimes I find that defenses aren't as ideal. They actually don't affect the game as much as you would like them to, even though they are pretty useful. You could definitely go that route, but let's put some brown emblems on right here and we can continue to beef up this build. Hopefully find things, ooh, Nido Queen, this is a good one. Gives us brown purple and increases our HP here. Oh, we can do Nido King as well, why not? So now we have two. We have brown and another purple right there. Let's see what we can find for our next one. We've got, oh, you know what? I'll do brown blue and I'll do another brown blue. So again, you won't have all of these right away, but as you start to unlock more emblems, you'll have more options for this right here. So there we go. This gives us six white, four brown, two blue, two purple, and we lose some special attack. Again, this is not for a special attacker, so that's a great stat to lose. The defense and special defense is pretty negligible, and then we get some good attack and some really good HP. And just for fun, here's a quick one for some attacker type Pokemon. Let's go ahead and throw on a sand slash a sand shrew we'll get some critical hit going with this uh let's see we'll throw on nido queen right here maybe something that gives us some attack right how about ooh, you machamp machamp gives us attack lower special attack i think we could find some more pokemon here marowak does the same thing and one more brown emblem that gives us some attack ooh how about you kabuta oh you buddy you give us critical hit and you lower special attack Perfect. All right, now we've got some option to put some blue on, some purple on, I'd say why not? You also could make this build with something like brown black or something like that, brown white also works really well. Let's put some blue on for fun here. We'll get some extra attack with Gyarados right there. And let's see what else we wanna do. We could use something like this Kingler right here, extra attack, we lose a little special defense. Let's see, Magikarp and Krabby both lose us some HP. So maybe they're not as ideal as we would think. Let's try a different blue. We're gonna move away from attack, maybe head on over to HP and see, ooh, there, perfect, Dugong. Great setup for us right there. And now we have a white purple open. I know I recently got a Lugia emblem and you eventually will as well. So let me go ahead and throw something like that on, even though I think it's not super ideal for this because it lowers our attack stat. So we're gonna use a bronze version of it right here. Where are you, buddy? Ooh, what do you, what, what about you, Zatu? Ooh, maybe Zatu's the way to go, actually. It'll be Zatu. So there we go, six brown, four blue, two white, two purple. Again, you're focusing mostly on the colors, and at the same time, you're looking to increase stats that work well for you and decrease stats that you don't use. Attackers, decrease special attack. Special attackers, decrease attack, usually critical hit as well. There are only a couple Pokemon in the game uh, that critically hit as special attackers. Delphox will be again soon. And then we also have Glaceon, of course, that critically hits. Once you get all the emblems you want, you can get pretty proficient and build something like this where you get 380 HP, you lose a bunch of special attack and critical hit, but you get some attack and you can put this on your physical attacker 
tank-like Pokemon. But until then, the emblems that we went over would work great for you right now. Again, just focus on those big colors and you will do fine. I hope this guide has helped you a little bit as I smack my microphone at the end. Yeehaw to you and yours. I love you. Let me know what other guides you would like in the comments. Mm.